had the principal opposition parties banks accounts seized you can't have elected chief ministers be put in jail mujhe lambi rani thi karni isliye maine aage ki taraf dekha mere netaon ki baat maine suna namaskar we are with uh, sachin pilot a veteran congress politician he was also the deputy chief minister of rajasthan um he has seen a uh, lots of ups and downs in his political life but it is um this gives you an opportunity to be asked a lot of different questions which are not always political there will be questions that uh, pertaining to your personal life perhaps and your likes and dislikes and of course your prediction for the uh, for the forecast for the future of uh, of the congress party which seems to be in some trouble right now um let me start by asking you a little sensitive question um had it not been for the tragic um passing away of your father would you have entered politics what if he had this had not happened but well, it's a tough one to answer because uh, when my father was alive um, he never talked about my com- coming into politics because i was very young i was 21 um and then after he passed away uh, it was a good 4 or 5 years after that that i decided to uh, contest elections so it wasn't a pre-planned sort of a thing in the family at all it just happened and then i thought to myself and in what way could i add more value and i i really believe that it's a good platform if people make good use of it so i had done corporate jobs and other things before i entered politics but when i entered it i did it after long hard thought about what i'm doing it wasn't a knee jerk reaction it wasn't an emotional reaction i was not persuaded or pushed into it it was a very well thought out decision that i took personally for myself and i have no regrets and uh, but to look back in your question is whether i would have done the same thing difficult to say difficult to say uh, but i enjoy what i do and um, it's been like you said in introduction mein aapne kaha ki it's been a lot of up and down in the last two and a half decades but uh, in hindsight you know it's it's been interesting and quite fulfilling in in most respects so i think everyone has a calling and uh, this is my calling so you're basically saying that you are a satisfied politician satisfied person are there <coughs> times when you feel like your heart is just breaking apart and it is tearing apart and you wish you had never entered politics first of all there is not as a satisfied politician <laughs> well, that doesn't exist <laughs> so and it shouldn't be right because once you're satisfied with what you've done or what you've achieved then there's no desire to better what you're doing or to further um, your own agenda or the party's agenda in public service so i don't think satisfaction is is issue i i was meaning in terms of if i had chosen some other profession would i have been happier no that's the reason why i said that um but yes i am satisfied with uh, with the chances i've gotten in last two and a half decades i've been quite lucky and privileged to have been given opportunities and i've done my best uh, my my possible best in terms of giving effort and working hard and uh, so that in that sense i'm satisfied but like you said we have elections now in the next few weeks there's a lot of work to be done a lot of ground to be covered and uh, in india every election is important this one far more than others so we all getting up to work hard and uh, try and do our best in this election and has the reward been commensurate with the effort that you have put in in politics i think so i mean i've had opportunities to work in the government of india and in the state government i've been party president now i'm general secretary so very few have perhaps gotten so much in 25 odd years mm. um but at the same time every time i have been given something an assignment i have really dedicated myself to fulfilling that so it's it's both ways so i am i have no regrets i am uh, not at all dissatisfied with anything but yes i do believe that we have a lot of hard work ahead of us uh, these are challenging times for the party as you know <clears throat> and there's no uh, better time to work hard uh, than elections and this summer will actually be decisive not just for my party but for india you think it will be the defining moment for the country i think this elections are important in many respects i'll get into it later yeah. but lok sabha elections generally uh, because we've had two elections back to back where we have not won elections and i think it hasn't happened uh, for more than 4 or 5 decades where we've lost two in a row so uh, this is an important election for all of us and i think people of india are also looking at this election very keenly so the results will be important for the future of our nation such in often people compare congress to a corporate where you can become a ceo but never a owner so where does that leave young politicians like you or for the matter gogoi and is that the reason why your colleagues like sindhya they left the party 
Look, you'll have to ask them their exact reasons. Because some people leave because of compulsion, pressure, uh, allurements. I don't know. Everyone has a different reason for why they choose to uh, shift ideology and move to a different path. That's for them to answer. But whether their decision is right or wrong, time will tell. And the voters will tell. As far as the Congress party is concerned, I think if all of us didn't feel uh, small owners of the entity, we would not put ourselves that much at stake. Right? You have to feel that you're part of where you work. And you have to enjoy what you do. And I feel that if you don't enjoy what you do, you won't succeed. Every successful person, whether it's a journalist or artist or sports person, has to really enjoy what they do. And I enjoy the job that I do. In the Congress, I think it's a, it's a misnomer. Uh, I think to, to say that there is a ceiling or a glass ceiling, it's not like that. I mean, there, there are no limits to what you can achieve if you work in a political party like ours. Uh, it's not the best last two terms. We haven't done really well ex uh, election-wise. But in organization, mein, party, mein, if, as long as you're honest to the job that you've been given, I think there is no end and no upper limit uh, mm. or what you can, where you can get. So do you want to say that apart from the job, you also love the company? Well, I think I feel like an owner because if I didn't have stake in it, unless you have personal stakes in what you, who you work for, you will be only semi-committed. To be fully committed, you have to feel that you belong in it. And that stakeholdership comes both ways. It's not one way. I do my work and I don't get any reward. And if I don't get anything, I don't get any effort. That is also futile. So it works both ways. So um, just to get a sense from you, how do you think the Congress and actually the larger opposition as well, how are you going to counter what is clearly <coughs> um, a really emotive appeal of something like the Ram Temple? I feel that the Ram Temple was constructed after the Supreme Court gave, it, gave its final verdict. And the highest court of the land gave a judgment that is acceptable to all parties. Now the truth is, <clears throat> it was the Supreme Court that decided what will happen. We in the Congress welcomed that as everybody else. That lays to rest all disputes, all contentions about that dispute. So the construction really didn't happen because of a party or a government or a leader. It happened because of the court's intervention, which was acceptable to all parties. Having said that, we all welcome the construction of a temple. Who can be against it? But then to use that platform and that judgment and that construction as a political ploy and to kind of harness the political dividends that come out of this emotional issue, I think is wrong because the state and the religion have two separate entities. The state runs by the constitution. It's, ag it's agnostic to religion, caste, creed, religion and gender. And that's how it should be. Religion and who you pray to, who you believe in, that's a matter of the home and the heart. And the two should not be together. When you combine things together, history will tell you whether South Asia, whether Europe, it's never argued well for the people of that area. So I believe that no matter how much a political party tries to monopolize uh, the Lord's name or, or the propaganda around it, uh, there is a limit to beyond which people are not accepted. Ultimately, people want a secure future for the future generations. They want a, a, a home. They want a better standard than their parents and grandparents, a betterment of life, freedom of speech, uh, to be able to express themselves, to have their ch children grow up in a safe environment, uh, to get decent income, to have dignity of life. Those are far more important issues than the emotive ones which we see in the short term. So all the media and WhatsApp messages and all the propaganda, I think has a limit beyond which you cannot try and monetize it politically. So I think we are fighting this election based on what we feel is important. And I'm not saying this because uh, it's A versus B. It's about what's good for our country. Let the people of India decide. Here are two agendas. Here's Congress, India's blueprint. Here's our roadmap. MSP for farmers, legal guarantee, jobs, food security, women, laborers, young people, wealth creation. Here's the other agenda. Religion, Mandir, Masjid, India, Pakistan, confrontation. Sort of. So let people decide. But for that, there has to be a level playing field. And I think the job that the election commission should do is in the very least provide a level playing field. You cannot have the principal opposition parties, banks accounts seized. You can't have elected chief ministers being put in jail when the moral code of conduct is in place. You can't have the things that we saw happen in Chandigarh in a mayor election. You have the officers, you know, spoiling votes. Supreme Court had to intervene. So all these things actually raise the question about are our institutions being undermined in a systematic way. And when the credibility of the institutions get compromised, that's the danger. 
so it's not about winning and and you know democracy ultimately is not about casting a vote it's about having an ecosystem where there is a check and balance where the for 75 years these constitutional bodies have been nurtured with various shades of government have come and gone but never before has the credibility of these institutions been systematically targeted and once people doubt the credibility i give the example of the supreme court why a supreme court judgment is accepted by all is because the institution is above su suspicion we all believe ultimately judge bhi to insaan hi hai na i can differ with the person but the institution is so strong that we blindly abide by what is being said now if you challenge the credibility and there's a question mark on the process of selection of those individuals or the backgrounds are checkered or there is less faith people have in them then that creates doubts and that's not healthy for a democracy so our country our republic our democracy deserves better it's not about winning and losing one election it is about having the strength to be able to face the the institutions as they are rather than mold them in a way that is suitable to the incumbent hmm. so mr gelart uses uh, you know is very some wild comments use the term uh, nikama nakara have you been too forgiving <laughs> <laughs> have i been too forgiving and how do you shake that off nay i mean i think the uh, i saw no advantage in um, replying in the same coin i saw no advantage in uh, in giving in to uh, being provoked and i frankly saw advantage in uh, showing a larger heart and moving on and uh, it's it was better for the party better for my state and certainly better for me uh, because i can look back and say with pride that uh, i never used any word that is unbecoming of someone uh, in public life i never used um, any sentences or any remarks that are derogatory because my upbringing has always taught me to respect people who are older than me in age and i always maintained that but having said that we had a meeting in delhi mr kharge mr gandhi you know sat down together and i was asked to uh, forgive and forget and move on and which is exactly what we all have done and that is the need of the hour for the party and for the state you just mentioned that this election is very crucial for the future of our country so you know can you explain further how this is crucial and how prepared is the congress which is already like facing a, uh, a flurry of defeats in the recent past you must not forget we have lost elections but we have won elections also we won in himachal pradesh we won in telangana we won in karnataka so winning and losing is a part of a political party's uh, life but this course of action of freezing bank accounts of putting people in jail unleashing the full brutal force of the state income tax ed and cbi openly and blatantly to anybody who is opposed to the ruling dispensation is unseen it's never happened before at least from what i remember so one is now how do you counter that we have to rely on the wisdom of the voters to do what is in the interest of our country as as a political party we will fight for them we'll raise the voice be the voice of the people fight aggressively in the elections but when the level playing fields are not available for us what is one to do we have to leave it to the judgment of the people of india so why i say every election is important kaun sa chunav important nahi hota lekin ye chunav important hai because yahan par log dekh rahe hain ki samvidhanik sanstaon ke sath kya ho raha hai uh, unki vishwasniyata ko kaise uh, धूमिल करने की कोशिश की जा रही है कुछ ताकतों से के माध्यम से और हम लोग जो कह रहे हैं कि हम संविधान में आस्था रखने वाले लोगों से चाहते हैं कि आप सही व्यक्ति सही पार्टी को वोट करें और मुझे लगता है कि 10 साल की रिपोर्ट कार्ड पर चर्चा होनी चाहिए जो भाजपा ने वादा किया सरकार बनाने के पहले दो करोड़ रोजगार किसान की आमदनी दुगनी करेंगे उन पर चर्चा नहीं हो पाती है चर्चा अलग अलग विषयों के ऊपर होती है तो रिपोर्ट कार्ड के आधार पर अगर जनता चुनाव में जाए और जाना भी चाहिए तो मुझे लगता है कि परिणाम हमारे पक्ष में आएंगे uh, आजकल <coughs> जैसा आप कह रहे थे सो डज इट लुक लाइक मोदी इज अनस्टॉपेबल देर इज नो आंसर टू हिम इन दी ऑपोजिशन एंड प्लीज डोंट से दैट वी डोंट गो बाय द पर्सनालिटी बिकॉज यू नो पीपल आस्क दीज क्वेश्चन हु इज द आंसर अभी तो इट लुक्स लाइक मिस्टर मोदी इज अनस्टॉपेबल दैट कुड बी योर परसेप्शन एंड यूर फील हैव योर ओपिनियन पर इन टू थाउजेंड फोर वाजपेयी जी रैन इलेक्शन ऑन इंडिया शाइनिंग कैंपेन that time we didn't declare who will be the pm face etc we never done that idea today is to have two options in in, in front of the people's view we are vote dalne ja rahe hain india or nda now pm candidate kon kya banega we have decided india alliance ki chunav jeetne ke baad we'll decide who will get what post and positions see there are so many competing interests also so it is not fair for us to say ki 
X, Y, and Z will be the front runners and not front runners. Let people decide. Issue, alliances, ideology, and what we bring to the table. Our roadmap, our blueprint, let people decide. Once we've got the mandate and the, and the support and the blessings, then we take a call, kisko kya banana hai. And dekho, unstoppable koi nahi hota. Ye public hai, janda janardan hai. Or 2004 mein, India Shani ka nara laga tha, lekin sarkar, Congress ki bani thi. So I think it's an open election, anything can happen. I'm confident that the Indian Alliance partners will secure the required numbers to form a government. Coming back to Rajasthan, uh, you and Mr. Gehloth are uh, two of the biggest names in the Congress party for that state. Uh, but uh, both of you are not contesting Lok Sabha polls. Why is that? See, that decision also with the CEC, when we the party, like, I have got responsibility for a state in Chhattisgarh. And uh, Ashok ji's son is contesting elections. Uh, but there are many leaders who are contesting, some are not being put in the, on, the, on the ballot paper. It's also strategically important for us to decide kisko kya kaam karna hai. But the best candidate who can win has been fielded in Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh, these two states, because I'm responsible for Chhattisgarh and Rajasthan is my home state. So, har vikti ko kya role nibana hai, that the party will decide. So, the AICC decided that these are the best candidates to contest. And it's not just one seat. I'm responsible for all our candidates. Ye medium ka bhi aata hai ki ye is group ka hai, us group ka hai. Not at all. The Congress candidate is our candidate. We have to work earnestly to make sure they win. And we've had, uh, we haven't opened an account last time or the time before that. So challenge now is to, and I think the feedback from what I've received is we'll do exceedingly well this time. Because people are also fed up. They want to change. Das saal wo log dekh liya, kuch ho nahi they may not speak for various reasons. People don't get the opinion very freely these days for, like I said, many reasons. But on voting day, they will do justice and I think they'll vote for the Congress in Pakistan and Chhattisgarh. So what is your realistic figure for the opposition alliance? Like 370 is what uh, Mr. Modi is saying? Uh, 300, 400, 500, 600, 600, they can say whatever they want. Mm. But I don't think I'm going to give numbers, but I think whatever is the required number for us to form a government, that number we'll get together. We'll, we'll come up with that number. For the alliance you're talking about? I think so. Because you know, it's wrong for a party to say election won. You're doing the first thing that you're winning 300, 400, 500. So, why are you doing this? 370 for BJP, 400 for NDA, the PM has been uh, virtually uh, been, been his campaign theme and rest of the uh, the ministers and the party leaders have been echoing the same sentiments. Of course, you didn't mention uh, that you don't want to stick your neck out on fixing a number, but you're confident you'll cross the 272 mark. Uh, do you think uh, you're sniffing a kind of a 2004 uh, moment where, you know, the India shining campaign one thought will see the BJP through? But it faltered apparently, and the Congress came. Rest is history. You feel the will there be a repeat of 2004? Again, I think it's very much possible, given the circumstances, given the unrest amongst most people, and uh, what is not usually seen in the popular media is the real sentiment on the ground. So I travel quite a bit across North India and other parts of the country, and I've seen there is unrest. People do want to change because you know, same speeches, same propaganda, same promises. How long will people keep listening to that? Yeah. And um, this. Politics of sort of bravado and you know overconfidence, mm -hmm. I think, has its limits. Uh, India is a very large country; it's not a monolith. So, what happens in the southern part of India and the eastern part of India is different from what happens in the northern parts. So, generally speaking, uh, India, the alliance partners are quite strong in most states. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, it's difficult to calculate today. But I say with with a lot of uh, humility and, and but confidence that the required numbers we will get. Um, uh, but the ultimate judge are people of India. I, I don't want to prejudge and, and, and uh, question the wisdom of the voters. Whatever they decide is acceptable to us. But these are the issues. And I think it's I, as a Congress person and my party, we are within a right, it's our duty and responsibility to raise the pertinent issues in public life. If I'm not even bringing to the fore things that matter to the people, make them aware and fight for the right things and fight for the institutional bodies that have been created for 70 years, if they're being challenged in ways that has never happened before, it's important for us. That there is unrest among people. And you also said that issues are very different in different states. Mm. People are unhappy over several different things. South is not the same as the North. But is there one undercurrent of um, a sense among people that we are losing the fight for democracy, that con the India is becoming, you know, less and less democratic. Is that an undercurrent that is sweeping through the entire country? I think the more immediate uh, problem that I've seen across my travels is jobs. 
I think the immediate concern for young people, educated young people, is lack of jobs, fallen wages, underemployment, uh, and frustrations. We you know with paper leaks and government jobs being clamped up. That's the immediate risk. Uh, larger concerns, of course, are the ones that you just mentioned. But to my mind, the agrarian crisis, it's underreported, it's, uh, it's not understood, and the ramifications it has on the economy and the polity is, is not at all reported. Job, of course, is the biggest thing across in, in the India. Uh, you look at what happened in Manipur, for example. People don't talk about it, but even the people of that state have the same right of dignity to life, to live in a secure environment. Are they getting that right? Uh, is someone going there and, and, and sorting out the issue that is left open for so long? So these things are, don't come up in the popular press, but they make an impact on the larger thinking population in India. So that's why I feel that governance is judged by deliverables and not by advertisements and propaganda. Mm -hmm. Of course, the country is large. You will make roads and build bridges. 6% growth GDP ka hoga. We'll become 3, 4, 5 trillion dollar economy because of the size of the country that we are in. But are the policies and the governance structures of this government really uplifting the lives of the poorest amongst us? Is it is it is the distribution of uh, is it equitable? Are not a few people benefiting a lot more than the others? The gap between the rich and the poor has increased phenomenally between the villages and the cities. The gap is ever widening. The haves and have-nots. So that the ch the chism is it's actually expanding. And my worry is that when you have such a um, such a wide gap. Uh, it's difficult to progress smoothly. So, in simplified terms, if the BJP government is brought down, it would be because of unemployment and the agrarian crisis. These are the two main things that you think will make a difference. It's not either or, uh, Joshi. No, both, both are both important. Of them. The two both of them. are important. Yeah. And also the fact that people feel that the government has acted in a very brazen manner in many cases. It has actually subverted many of the norms and uh, traditional decencies that we had in politics and Cross the line many a times, including mm -hmm. uh, you know clamping down on leaders of the opposition, in using agencies to subvert the voices of the people who oppose them, putting people in jail, uh, and then to say law will take its own course. It's easy to say that, but the perceptions are different. I think all of them culminate mm -hmm. to a view that I think uh, change is inevitable. Obviously, a fact there is no level playing field. Um, there is the weaponization of the ED, CBI, and various other things. The issues are of jobs. These are immediate pressing issues. Really, the thing I just really want to understand in your assessment, has the Congress and the India Alliance, and we are, we are 18 days to elections today. Today is April 1. Has it, been able, has it been able to tap into this discontent? Or is, will it be able to tap into this, this discontent? Every political party uh, does its best, with, given the reach it has and the resources it has. And I, in different states, uh, in sitting in New Delhi, one may not realize it, but different states, different parties are doing their job, and people are not uh, not unaware. Right now, it depends on us if we can harness that towards you know benefiting the India Alliance partnerships. I think we are doing that, but the results we'll only know on counting day. It's it's wrong for us to judge before that. But yes. Those issues are the ones we think are important and they must be brought to the forefront. And it's a job of the opposition to do that. BJP is making a narrative in the election. Who is who is in front of Modi? He has also been asked. And when someone comes from the back, he is from Rahul Gandhi. And BJP also tries to make this election with Narendra Modi versus Rahul Gandhi. So do you think that Rahul Gandhi is in front of Narendra Modi? या वो प्राइम मिनिस्टर कैंडिडेट के तौर पर उनको पब्लिक एक्सेप्ट कर रही है देखिए जो सबसे मजबूत आवाज है सरकार के विरोध में वो कांग्रेस के राहुल गांधी की है इसको कोई एक्सेप्ट करे या ना करे लेकिन रिलेंटलेसली 10 साल से लगातार उनके विरोध में सबसे प्रखर सबसे प्रमुख और सबसे ज्वलंत अगर बात किसने बोली है वो राहुल गांधी जी ने बोली है अपनी यात्राओं में अपनी बातों में इसको कुछ लोग उसका मिसयूज करेंगे कुछ लोग एक्सेप्ट नहीं करेंगे लेकिन हकीकत यह है कि जितने विपक्ष के नेता हैं उनमें सबसे ज्यादा प्रबल तरीके से उन्होंने बात को रखा है उन्होंने कभी किसी पद की लालसा नहीं करी है और 35 साल से गांधी परिवार का कोई सदस्य ना तो मंत्री बना है ना मुख्यमंत्री ना प्रधानमंत्री तो पद की अगर लालसा होती तो सोनिया जी प्राइम मिनिस्टर बन जाती 2004 के अंदर या राहुल गांधी प्राइम मिनिस्टर बन जाते जब प्रपोजल बीच में आया था तो वो मेरे को लगता नहीं किसी का पद को हड़पने की भूख किसी के अंदर है बट हां 
पार्टी के लिए लोगों के लिए समाज के लिए काम करना सभी चाहते हैं जहाँ तक आपने कहा कि मुकाबला क्या है तो मुकाबला व्यक्ति से क्या है हमारा मुकाबला है कि भाई जमहूरीत को लोकतंत्र को मजबूत करना है कौन बेहतर सेवा कर सकता है और अल्टीमेट निर्णय पब्लिक करती है तो हम लोग को भी कॉन्टेस्ट हमारा एक व्यक्ति के साथ नहीं है हमारा सरकार के परफॉर्मेंस को लेकर है दस साल की सरकार हमारी यूपी की थी दस साल की इनकी सरकार थी तो तुलना कर लें जो बेहतर उसको वोट डाल दीजिए कुछ ये पर्सनल एनिमोसिटी नहीं है ये प्रतिशोध की भावना से राजनीति हम लोग तो नहीं करते हैं कि आक्रमण की राजनीति हिंसा की राजनीति क्रोध की राजनीति हम तो संतुलित तरीके से बड़ी विनम्रता से बात को रख रहे हैं और जनता जनार्दन है जिसका बटन दब जाएगा वो सेवा करेगा पाँच साल यू टॉक्ट अबाउट द लेवल प्लेइंग फील्ड इन इलेक्शन बट हैव यू बीन एबल टू अचीव द लेवल प्लेइंग फील्ड विद इन योर पार्टी यू नो there has been a tussle between the old guard and the young generation for a long time you've been fighting this yourself and considering that the bjp <coughs> has been poaching a lot of your young faces you know of late so do you think you'll be you've been able to convey it to the party leadership you know, i think hamari party badi purani party hai and i just talked about myself all the responsibility jo mujhe mili hai pichle 25 saalon mein wo kam nahi hai lekin badlav ek nirantar prakriya hai usse ko rok nahi sakta और किसी के चांस रुकने वाली भी नहीं है तो संगठन में सरकार में बदलाव होंगे ही होंगे इसका ये मतलब नहीं है कि कोई अनुभव ही है जैसे खरगे साहब हमारे निर्वाचित अध्यक्ष हैं ही इज इलेक्टेड कांग्रेस प्रेसिडेंट देश की हर राजधानी में डब्बा रखा था हमने वोट डाले बिटवीन डॉक्टर थ्रूर एंड खरगे साहब एंड खरगे जी बंद इलेक्शन फेर एंड स्क्वायर ऐसी कितनी पार्टी में चुनाव होते हैं अभी नड्डा साहब उनको एक्सटेंशन मिली है किसने प्रपोजल किया किसने उसको अप्रूव किया किसने वोट डाले किसने नामांकन करा किसी को पता ही नहीं है तो बाकी पार्टियों में तो ये दूर दूर तक कोई मतलब ही नहीं है हमारे यहाँ चुनाव हो रहा है और हमने उदयपुर में एक घोषणा करी थी कि 50 परसेंट ऑफ ऑल हमारी पार्टी में जो पद होंगे 50 परसेंट विल गो टू पीपल अंडर एज ऑफ 50 नो अदर पॉलिटिकल पार्टी हैज़ डन दैट मैं दोबारा बोलता हूँ 50 परसेंट ऑफ ऑल पार्टी पोस्ट विल गो टू पीपल अंडर एज ऑफ फिफ्टी नॉट दस एज कमिटमेंट टू वर्ड द यंग जनरेशन आई थिंक द कांग्रेस पार्टी हेज वॉक द टॉक ऑन दैट फ्रंट so uh, supplementary to nirmal in this um, rahul versus modi uh, narrative do you think uh, rahul is the most uh, underrated politician i don't think we should go into ratings because i'll tell you why because it's very easy to pass judgments mm. right it's i know what it takes uh, being in the opposition being under attack from all sides 24 hours a day relentlessly and huge amount of resources being deployed just to undermine and to discredit an individual despite that to have the resilience and and the strength to keep fighting despite the odds um, despite everything coming at you to go on and on and on it takes certain strength to walk 4000 kilometers in this country from top to bottom to top uh, it takes certain perseverance so i think let people judge kis ki rating kya hai but i think on issues on principles on facts on logic on on what we believe is important for the country people will judge better kis ki rating kitni hai क्या बहबे गोहलीत के लिए प्रचार करने जाएंगे जाऊंगा हंड्रेड परसेंट जाऊंगा और एक मजदूरी से जुड़ा सवाल पहले क्या, गया था, क्या आपने अशोक गहलोत को दिल से माफ कर दिया यार माफी तो दिल से ही होती है और कहाँ से होती है <laughs> <laughs> माफ मैंने कहा ना माफी तो दिल से ही होती है और कहाँ से होती है और बात माफ करने की भी नहीं है मुझे जब कहा था खरगेज राहुल जी ने कि जो हुआ जो कहा मेरे बारे में जो शब्दों का प्रयोग किया गया किसी को आप में से किसी को थोड़ा अच्छा लगा सुनने के लिए लेकिन बावजूद उसके मैंने रिएक्ट नहीं किया क्योंकि मुझे लगा कि उसकी ज़रूरत नहीं है अगर मैं वही करूंगा जो मुझसे एक्सपेक्ट किया जा रहा है तो मुझे लंबी राजनीति करनी है मुझे सबको साथ जोड़ते रखना है किसी ने अगर कुछ गलत किया है तो टू रॉन्ग जोड मेगा राइट इसलिए मैंने आगे की तरफ देखा मेरे नेताओं की बात को मैंने सुना और मन से हम सब मिलकर काम किया हम लोग मेजोरिटी नहीं बना पाए वो अलग बात है लेकिन अभी चुनाव लोकसभा के आ रहे हैं और वैभव गहलोत के पिछली बार जब मैं अध्यक्षता पार्टी का लोकसभा का टिकट हमने दिल्ली से करवा के लेकर गए मैंने नामांकन उनका करवाया चुनाव नहीं जीत पाए लेकिन मैंने प्रचार किया था इस बार वो अलग जगह चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं वो सीट बदल ली उन्होंने इस बार जालोर से चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं तो वहाँ क्या मैं बिल्कुल प्रचार करूँगा उनके लिए सचिन जी वॉट यू लाइक टू डू वेन यू आर नॉट डूइंग पॉलिटिक्स अदर दैन पॉलिटिक्स इज देर समथिंग एल्स दैट यू दैट रियली इंटरेस्ट यू आई थिंक आई लॉस्ट आउट एन मोस्ट हॉबीज नाउ लास्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स बट um i like to travel a little bit i like to watch um, movies if i can and um I like to play sports once in a while that's about it so uh, we dread that uh, you used to love flying and uh, shooting hmm. do you do any of that unfortunately shooting to main 
कॉलेज के बाद नहीं कर पाए आई प्लेड आई प्लेड नेशनल इन डेली स्टेट देन आई गेव अप जस्ट छूट गया मेरे से and then flying uh, i have i had a flying license uh, i have to keep it current which i have not been able to do but uh, i don't fly but i i still plane quite a bit lekin wo main dono kaam itna nahi kar pata hu i think that's mm-hmm. but i did enjoy i got my flying license when i was only 17 years old <laughs> so if you were not a politician what would you be i mean what would you be, your profession be i mean i work as you know uh, in, in the corporate sector i work for automotive company i work very small uh, while in the bbc um i did some consulting work uh, so i'm a pretty qualified i would have got some job or the other or done something else so you you know you have traveled a lot in india hmm. um, and you meet so many people what do you think is the most endearing feature of indians or of this country what do you like the most faith, faith i think as a religion people, yeah no, no no people have faith like you know when you talk to someone there's implicit innocence in how people are believe in what you say and what you do across and most in rural areas and there is a i mean whether you go to kerala or ladakh or itanagar there is a innate sort of if you talk to people kindly nicely there is that interpersonal faith that develops automatically mujhe lagta hai that's like one of our biggest strengths we don't doubt we don't suspect so easily we tend to give the person a, a good chance and i think that's um, in a, that's a real asset Uh, uh, you know, societal values जो हैं उसमें दिस इज वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट थिंग आई सीन लैंग्वेज नहीं बोलते हैं कोई बात नहीं आप वो जानते नहीं हैं आप बैठ के से पूछो दे विल यू नो द अंडरस्टनेस एंड देर इंडिया यू टू कि हाँ बताइए क्या बात है हाउ वी कैन हेल्प दिस अ जनरल पॉजिटिव इंटरपर्सनल फेद दैट पीपल हैव इन मैन द टॉक टू इच अदर सो आई थिंक दिस होल्ड हम मीडिया टेलीविजन फिल्में देखते हैं वी थिंक ऑल सच ऑफ थिंग्स बट जनरली देर इज अ टेंडरनेस एंड अ बिनाइन अप्रोच टू 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 ईच अदर which i think is so important i think that's the finest value we've been able to develop in our country so that's what defines all of us as indians this is the defining feature i think so and i think yeah. the fact that we accept our differences you know so yeah. we live by accepting what you know and i keep saying this everywhere i go you know you learn the most from people who are least like you to jo aapke aap jaise kapde pehenta hai aapki bhasha bolta hai aapki tarah puja paath karta hai how much will you learn from that person people who would differ from you and yet you live in close proximity you learn from them you share their joys and sorrows their festivities their customs their background their culture their food that i think is so unique to india and that's something we we really take it for granted hum log usko harness nahi karte hain we don't really play on that it's such a unique ability for people with even less education to accept the fact that people are different but yes they're still kind and they're still nice and we can live in close proximity that is something you know that the fiber is so strong but because हम लोग अपने काम में तो बिजी रहते हैं वी डोंट एवर रियली टेक इट अपन आर सेल्व टू शो केस दैट वट वी हैव वी कीप टॉकिंग अबाउट इट बट वी डोंट रियली बिलीव इट वी डोंट रियली शो इट टेल एंड टॉक अबाउट इट टू आर फ्यूचर जनरेशन एंड दैट्स मिसिंग एंड एस वी गेट मोर एंड मोर बिजी विद मोबाइल फोन एंड सोशल मीडिया दिस इज गेटिंग अ बिग वैक्यूम वट वो फेटलिज्म डू थिंक इंडियन आर टू फेटलिस्टिक एंड जस्ट यू नो चलो हो गया अब इसको कुछ नहीं कर सकते लेट्स नॉट बॉदर अबाउट इट आई डोंट वांट टू चेंज इट आई थिंक नॉट यंग जनरेशन नो 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 दे विल चेंज द डेस्टिनी दे विल ट्राई एंड ट्राई एंड ट्राई टू दिस सक्सीड द रेजिलियंस सेल्फ और सेल्फ कॉन्फिडेंस नाउ दे हैव मे बी इन द ओल्डर जनरेशन दे हैड दैट फेट कम बैक की जो हो गया सो हो गया बट नाउ आई थिंक पीपल डोंट वांट टू टेक नो फॉर एन आंसर दे विल गिव इट एवरीथिंग दे हैव गॉट टू चेंज द डेस्टिनी फादर सचिन वुड लाइक देयर हिज सन्स टू बी इन पॉलिटिक्स नहीं नहीं नॉट ऑल अराउंड वी हैव नो I said, "Marja, jo karo." Like my father, I could. When I grew up, <coughs> I used to help my father in his campaign. You know, like any other teenager, so Bhasan move, go and play for him, just to help out because you know, in the house, 24 hours were talked about. And then the election was very close. 96 was there, 98 was there, 99 was there. So we had three Lok Sabha elections in three years. So it was a busy time for the family. So you get involved in that at a personal level, but professionally, my family, my parents, not once did they even talk about me doing something in public life. पढ़ाई करो डिग्री करो मास्टर्स करो जो मर्जी करो एंड माई किड्स ऑल्सो वेरी यंग स्टिल बट आई सर यू डू वॉट यू हैव टू डू जस्ट बिग गुड ह्यूमन बींग्स एंड वट एवर यू डू डू इट विद फुल डेडिकेशन एंड ऑनेस्टी एंड यू विल सक्सीड आर यू जनरली अ रिलीजियस पर्सन आई एम नॉट रिचुअलिस्टिक दैट मच बट आई बिलीव इन गॉड येस बट आई 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 थिंक इज नो वन बिजनेस टू यू नो प्रोजेक्ट वट दे डू एन आप व्रत रखते हो नहीं रखते हो भजन करते हो नहीं करते हो क्या पहनते हो क्या खाते हो दैट्स पर्सनल स्पेस बट येस आई आई बिलीव इन यू ऑन माइंड यू टॉक्ट अबाउट द यूनिकनेस दैट इज इंडिया द स्ट्रॉन्ग फैब्रिक द फाइबर्स दैट बाइंड अस ऑल 
But isn't that exactly what has been most worrying in the last few years, that that fabric is actually getting frayed and the very thing that we grew up with and, you know, that is actually being, it's like no, getting I don't, frayed I, I don't, at the edges. Do I know you what you're saying. Sense? I don't agree with you because okay. that sort of element that exists in all societies, all countries is a minuscule level, mm. but it's, it's very hyperactive. It's very visible. It doesn't define us. Uh, there are always elements of that nature, but I don't think they they cover the entire landscape. They're very small and they're like a flash in the pan they will, and they will subside. Okay. But and, and they, I think, no, but I think we have the, um, the capacity to absorb all of that and yet move forward. It's such a large country. There will be some under, underbelly, you know, which panders to the thoughts that you've expressed. But I don't think it's overarching in a way that it'll change the entire framework of our society and thousands of years of our, you know, historical, um, you know, uh, lineage and history. It won't happen. When do you plan to visit the Ram Temple? I haven't got a date yet, but I will go when I feel like going. I don't have to get an invite for it. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Pilot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.